episode 20 of No One Asked Us. We are here. We are ready to roll. We are recording this on Monday night, July 5th. Happy belated Independence Day to everyone out there. Craig, happy belated Independence Day to you. Uh, did you celebrate well and celebrate respons- responsibly this weekend? Totally responsibly. Yes. Yeah. 100%. Um, it was pretty relaxing. I uh, went to the lake house and went out on the boat a couple times, but for, for the most part, just kind of stayed in and just soaked in the, the rest and relaxation, the R&R of the weekend. Um, for the most part, there was some, some craziness with our dogs and one of them's first, uh, 4th of July. So, so yeah, I was, was, I was going to say, I don't know if was it relaxing up until the fireworks started or cause you mentioned that on the Twitter sphere, um, yeah. that they didn't like the fireworks. Um, actually Onyx, the pup was pretty okay. They would go off and he would just like perk up. Like, what was that? What was that? It was Lola who got really, really scared and really, really nervous. Um, so Sun or Saturday night. No, Sunday night. Today's Monday. Duh. Today's Monday. Today's Monday as we record. Um, Sunday night, we went out for a, for a later in the day boat ride. So we were on the boat when people started shooting them off. And they started echoing off the trees and stuff. And so they were a little louder than normal. And, and she started to get scared. Uh, when we got inside, she cuddled up on the couch with us and she, she was okay. Um, but my issue, and this is kind of old grandpa moment here. Um, the guy that lives next, lives next to the house that we were at, um, has a infatuation with dynamite. So he doesn't, I mean, he did shoot off regular fireworks, but he would just light a half a stick of dynamite and throw it on the ground which is 50 times louder and makes me jump. So the pups were not too happy with him. And and he does that all the time. He was doing it in April and in January when we were up there, he just likes to explode things. Um, So that was my issue this weekend, but it was 4th of July. I wasn't going to say anything to him. We were having fun celebrating our country. So, um, so yeah, it it was fun though for, for a, a nice long weekend for me, four days off. That's, that's wonderful. I, uh, so my thing with fireworks, a uh, couple things. One, I'm kind of like, personally, I'm just kind of over fireworks in general. I worked in minor league baseball for several years. Yes. Um, I, I've seen every fireworks show under the sun. Plus, if you are at all familiar with um, what they do at Walt Disney World, any yeah. fireworks show and you see in your backyard, like it just, it just, I, I could I could take them or leave them. Like they're just not like something that I need in my life. Um, My thing though is, but I, I, before I say that, I'm not against fireworks, especially on the 4th of July. Like I I have nothing against them. I just don't feel like I need to go out of my way to watch them. What I have an issue with is, especially in the state of Indiana, I don't know if it's like this back where you are, but fireworks season is weeks long. Like just, you could just hear them in the middle of the night on like a random Wednesday, people are just shooting them off. Like, I'm not talking about the ballpark a few miles down the road, shooting them off on Friday nights. I'm talking about just somebody in their backyard, just having some fun with some loud noises at, you know, 11 o'clock at night on a random Wednesday night. Like that season lasts way too long. So I don't know. Again, this is just me. You talked about your, you know, old old man rant that you wanted to talk about but like that's where i'm at with it like and i don't even have dogs like if i had dogs i'd probably even feel more you know strongly about it but just like why why does this need to be happening in the middle of june on like a wednesday night it just doesn't it just doesn't need to happen Uh, if you want to go see fireworks i think you go to someone doing them professionally i don't see the need for personal firework shows yeah i'm i agree with you i agree with you well that's going to be uh it's going to be, you know, that um, conversation, I guess. I had a great weekend myself. Um, it was nice to get home and see some family and some friends. You know, with the way things have gone the last year, you know, you don't really get to go out and see a lot of people at one time. And uh, so it was nice to, to get home and see a lot of people that I haven't seen in a while, uh, especially all in one place. That was kind of cool. So a uh, nice weekend for us as well. Um, I know I shouted out a couple times, but uh, my dad is officially done. Uh, I only mention him again because he's one of our only consistent listeners. So, 
<laughs> my dad is officially done as principal at Oakwood High School. So we kind of celebrated his retirement a little bit this weekend as well. So um, yeah, good weekend. Good weekend back at home. We are recording this on Monday night. And are, as you, I mentioned, um, are you oh, his replacement? Did I hear a rumor that Logan Lee is the, the new Oakwood uh, principal? I don't have nearly the uh, the background necessary for that. They've been, <laughs> they've been trying to get me every time I come home. My mom has some sort of teacher vacancy that they're trying to fill and she asked me if I want to do it and every time I have to politely tell her no thank you so um <laughs> you know no I I am not replacing my father uh, that replacement has already been named and, no one uh, can replace your father Logan no one no one can uh but no congratulations to Tim Congrats, and uh, Tim. no I will not be uh replacing him um I love I, what, I love the screenshots you send me like days after the episode airs that that he's like he has a lot going on. <laughs> Maybe now though, since he doesn't have as much going on, he'll listen to us earlier in the week. Usually it's like, you know, four or five days later that he finally gets around to it. And he has some sort of take that he wants. Because last I think it was last week's show yeah. when you went on your whatever NBA, it was, NBA lottery. The NBA lottery rant you went on. My dad had a great response to that, that he wanted to chime in on. So maybe sometime this will become a live show and we'll have callers. And, yeah. uh, you know, he, he would, I'm sure he would love to uh, get one of, one of the two of us fired up about something. Yeah. So, uh, but yes, he's, you know, one of our consistent listeners. So I wanted to give him one more shout out. Um, again, I've mentioned at the top of the show, Craig, this show is 20 weeks old. Can you believe 20. that? We've been doing this for 20 straight, 20 straight weeks. We've not taken one single week off. There's been a couple times where we've both been traveling on the weekends. And I thought that maybe this was going to be the week that it didn't happen. Yeah. But it's not always been consistent in terms of what day it comes out, what day we record, but we have been doing this now for 20 straight weeks. So congratulations to you. Congratulations as well. Happy, uh, happy 20 week anniversary. We almost have as many episodes as we have listeners. (laughs) <laughs> we're getting we're getting really close to that number <laughs> um Dan- dangerously close to that we number, are dangerously close but yeah it's been fun we, i even did one from vacation in florida you did on vacation in florida and i was like i gotta do my podcast and, and you still called into the show so exactly uh that's wonderful well congratulations and happy anniversary to you craig um as we go through 20 weeks but uh you know in these 20 weeks uh, had you asked me 20 weeks ago what I thought, two questions. If you had you asked me 20 <laughs> weeks ago, one, do you think we would still be doing this show at the beginning of July? I'm not sure what I would have told you. Probably yes, but I didn't really know. And two, do you think we would still be talking about Illinois basketball in the, at the beginning of July? And I would have said no. Like that season would have ended three months ago. Why would we still be talking about Illinois basketball? But Craig, here we are <laughs> on July 5th. This is coming out on July 6th, and we are still talking about Illinois basketball. It's been, you know, the season, and then it's been, you know, players leaving, uh, recruiting, uh, coaching vacancies, still have a coaching vacancy. We won't talk about that right now. Um, But there was some even bigger news that came out of the Illinois basketball program last week that kind of shocked the world a little bit, I think. Yeah. Were uh, Were you shocked when you saw the tweet come across from Andrew Slater? that said that uh, Kofi Coburn will be in, entering his name into the transfer portal? Because I was shocked. I yes. was I was flabbergasted. Yes. Um, I, I sent a GIF reaction to it on Twitter, but I can't remember what it was. Um, I don't remember. What day was it? Do you remember what day it was? Oh, yeah. It was, uh, it was July, July 1st. 1st. It was, and I don't even know who the actor or the uh, show is, but it was the, what? Um, excuse me. <laughs> what what is this because half of it confuses me yes the other half does not confuse me right but as i think about it and we've had a lot of time to think about it now yeah because this came out on wednesday of last week and uh it's now or was that wednesday whatever what whatever day it was it's now recording this monday nights we've had several days to think about it i just it's, it's the way the college basketball world works now. Um, you know, Kofi, for those that don't know, Kofi is still weighing his options. Um, Andrew Slater said Kofi will enter the transfer portal while keeping his name in the draft. Yeah. So up until now, his name was in the draft, but he had no intentions or he had not made his intentions known that he was going to leave or potentially leave Illinois. It was either Illinois 
or go pro. Well, now he has said that he's going to enter, enter the transfer portal. I've not seen – was it confirmed that he's in the portal? I I believe – I think so? there okay. was – a. I think a deadline has passed. I think that was the report, and that's what I was going to talk about here. I, you're right. I, I think, think you're part right. of this thing is that there's so many staggered deadlines for things, yep. and – you just, you just, you just said it, his options, you know, up until this past week where I go pro or I say at Illinois, what Kofi has done now is he's given himself a heck of a lot more options. Yes. Which is what I was saying with, this is the college basketball world we live in right now. So yes, there was a deadline of July 1st to put your name in the portal to be eligible for this coming season. So anyone that puts their name in the portal now, they will not be able to play this coming school year. They will have to sit out if they transfer. Um, And part of that was you don't necessarily have to have your name in the portal on the first, but you have to have at least made your intention known to your school and got the process started on the first. So he does it on the first. um, And and like I was saying, this is just college basketball now. It's giving him the option. There's so much up in the air in college basketball right now, especially with NIL. Um he could probably make more money in college than he would in the G league. And he was likely going to the G league. So it makes sense for him to say, all right, maybe pro, maybe I'm not ready for the program. I'll go to college, but if I'm going to college, I want to give myself the best opportunity. So for that, I have to put my name in the transfer portal. Yep. Not necessarily is he going to leave Illinois because I think he has established himself so much in the central Illinois area. If he comes back, he is going to easily make six figures. Probably, I don't know. I think IO was estimated worth like, I, I don't I don't want to throw numbers out there because it could totally be wrong. But Kofi would make a ton of money in central Illinois if he took advantage of all his opportunities. So I've had people text me that, oh, Illinois is going to never going to be able to keep up. But a guy like Kofi, I I just don't see how he can't. I don't see how he could make that much more somewhere else as opposed to central Illinois. I don't know that he can. Right. I, I don't I don't know realistically that he can go somewhere else and make more money. Could he go somewhere else and have a better shot at winning a national championship? Yes, probably so. Yeah, maybe. But that answer is probably yes, more so than can he make more money somewhere else? Because yeah. yes, there are bigger programs than Illinois, yeah. but he goes to one of those bigger programs. He may not be the big man on that. Te- I mean, he's the big man. He may not be <laughs> the the focal point of that team. Yes. In central Illinois, he's already, is already an established brand. Exactly. He is all, he has two years of, you know, being an all conference and an all American player in Champaign. Exactly. You go somewhere else, you're essentially starting over. Yeah. Yes, he does have some of the laurels behind him, and he's still going to be an All-American player wherever he goes. But if he's – if his, it, it's really up to him and what he's looking to do. Yep. If he is wanting – if his goal is to win a national championship, I mean, I think he has a decent shot to do it in Illinois if he stays. Yeah. But I think he would have a – potentially have a better shot if he did that somewhere else. So I could understand that. But if it's about the money – if, if that is the reason why he is going to stay in college basketball, as opposed to going pro, if, if it is about the money, I don't know where he could go, where he would make more than he would had he stayed, if he stays in Champaign. I mean, we know the obvious thing people are saying, right? There is, there is an obvious answer to this, but I still stand by what I say. Yeah. I don't know that he makes more money at Kentucky than he does at Illinois. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the immediate talk was, oh, okay, he's going to Lexington. He's following Antigua, who kind of brought him to Champaign and coached him into the All-American. But for Antigua and Chin both to go to Champaign or to go to Lexington, and if they pull Kofi with them, they they would never be able to set foot in the state of Illinois again. Yeah, I mean, that's I mean, I don't want to say it's grimy or, or shady because that's college basketball, like. You know, Kofi has a great relationship with Orlando Antigua. So, I mean, you, you can see where he's coming from. But, I mean, that would just piss Illinois fans off. And, I mean, it would, I, it would likely burn. I agree a, with you. It would burn a bridge 
between Illinois, between Brad Underwood, between Josh Whitman, and that whole Kentucky program. Don't you think? I agree with you. No, I agree with you. But let me ask you this question. Yeah. I understand it is it is believed and it has been said that when Illinois or when um, Orlando and Chin left, that they said we're not we're not going to toy with the players at Illinois. We're not going to take Curbelo. We're not going to take Kofi. But if your boss, your new boss, who is now paying you, if you're Antigua, enough to be the highest assist, highest paid assistant coach probably in all of college basketball, says we need a big man make a phone call. Are you going to tell him? No, exactly. It's not. Or like, it's not. I, that's the thing. Like, I don't, I don't it's, know this. It would necessarily be up to Antigua. Exactly. Like, it's not Antigua I mean, or Chance it's, call. It's, it's John it's, Calipari's program. If he wants yeah. Kofi Coburn, he's going to go get Kofi Coburn. Yeah. The interesting thing though, with Kentucky is they just got Oscar Shibwe. Remember mid season yeah. West Virginia transfer who Illinois recruited really hard. He committed to Kentucky in mid season. So him and Kofi are, very similar even even to the stature like she weighs not as big as kofi i think she weighs like six nine two thirty two fifty and kofi's seven foot two ninety two ninety five so kofi's the bigger guy but i mean that's the same position so um i don't know it, it's a sticky situation um I, i'm seeing some positive things for illinois but until until kofi makes that decision we just we just don't know what to expect because anytime someone puts their name in the portal, there's a reason they're doing it. I, I, if he wanted to come back to Illinois and his heart was fully set on Illinois, he would say, I'm either going to Illinois or I'm going pro. So, yeah. and that's another thing that we need to t- need to touch on the withdrawal deadline from the draft to keep your college eligibility is the seventh. So one day after this hits the airwaves and, and hits the internet, Kofi will have to decide if he wants to play college. Yeah. Um, and it's so weird to me that there's a, there's different deadlines with this because the NCAA deadline is the seventh, but the um, NBA withdrawal deadlines, not till the end of July. So if you withdraw between then, what are you going to do? Do you, are you supposed to go play pro overseas? Like, I don't know. I just feel like it, it causes a lot of unnecessary confusion when you have two different deadlines like that. No, I agree. I, and that's what I mentioned earlier. I think the fact that there are these overlapping and staggered deadlines that it yeah. just, it does make things complicated. And, um, you know, now with the addition of NIL, it just, it just makes, I don't want to use the word complicated again, but it just continues to pile on to how this stuff yeah. works. I mean, one of the advantages to the NIL thing is for a, a player like Kofi, yeah. who can, you know, is a borderline draft pick who can go play overseas, um, who could go play in the G League, but now can probably, and most probably most definitely make more money playing in For college sure. than he could going to play pro. For sure. So when you add that on top to all these other deadlines, it's just making things a lot more complicated. I don't yeah. blame Kofi for putting his name in the transfer portal. No. At all. I, I really don't. Yes, it caught me off guard. It caught all of us off guard yeah. when we saw it. But after just taking a few minutes to think about it, I don't know why he wouldn't. He's basically because all he's doing is agent. giving himself. Yes, he's, he's just he's a free agent. If there if the NCAA is going to allow this to happen, he has to take advantage of it. And I can't blame him at all. Yeah. He went from having two options essentially to now having a plethora of options 300 there's 300 300 exactly <laughs> so um he can do whatever he wants to do um do i think he'll stay at illinois i don't know or first i mean the first off obviously as you said has to make the decision about whether or not he's going to go pro i think he's coming I, back to college i think he's coming back to college i he's yeah. i think he's learned he's not getting drafted um he knows he can go play overseas he knows he could play in the g league but now with nil if nil didn't pass this year yes i think he goes Yes. Because I think it's one of those situations, as I was getting to, where money is a factor. Yes. You know, those guys that are borderline players that just want to go make money so they can support their family and get started in their professional career, go, by all means. That's go Kofi. do what you can do. Yes. Now he has the option to make money and possibly make even more money to yeah. stay in college. I don't think he goes pro. I do think he stays at college. Does he stay at Illinois? I don't know. 
And I don't think anybody really knows that answer. I'm not sure Kofi even knows that answer. I think that's- as I've said, I think he can possibly, I think he'll probably, if money is the deciding factor for him, I think he can make more money staying in Champagne than he could anywhere else. Yeah. I think that's the job of Brad Underwood right now right. is to hammer home the fact, Hey dude, you are established here. People love you here. There's no IO here. You are the guy you and, and Curbelo because Curbelo is going to get some money too. And having, um, and having Curbelo there, I mean, that having yeah. that guard lineup with yeah, Curbelo exactly. and Trent, like, I, I don't know why you wouldn't want to play with that. Exactly. Is exactly. that the best shot Kobe's going to have to win a national title? I don't know. But if he comes back, they're immediately thrown into the top of the conference, at least. Yes. Yes. So you have to say they're back. They're right back in the national conversation. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. And that, that's know. something that I'm sure I. Brad and it, Brad and his coaching staff, what he has of a coaching staff right now, they're talking to Kofi. Now they, they can't facilitate any of this NIL stuff. They can't be like, Hey, we've got you a deal with so-and-so, but they can show him and lay him out. Like, Hey, here is what you're going to have. Here are the opportunities that you're going to have. And then let him make his decision. But like you said too, there's not, there might be another point guard like Andre Curbelo, but he's a pretty rare breed. He's yeah. going to have – Io had two triple-doubles this year. I think Curbelo probably will as well yeah. this upcoming year, and a lot of those assists are going to go to Kofi. So yeah. it's in his – the ball is in his court. It just depends on what he wants. I'm with you. I think he comes back to college. I really think it's either Illinois or Kentucky. I, I don't see him going to some other school that he has no relationship with. That's kind of where I'm at. And if he goes to Kentucky, I'll don't know what I'll do. <laughs> I'm with you. I think those are really the only two options. Is it possible that somebody comes out of nowhere and, 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 you know, swipes them up? Sure. But I do think he really comes down to one of those two. So um, that was the big news um, out of, Illinois sports world last week, um, Illinois basketball did get a, uh, a recruit signing, yeah. um, for the class, the 2022, I believe, yeah. um, a guard out of the, the high school that produced one, Mr. LeBron James. Uh, oh, I don't know if you're yeah. familiar with St. Ma- St. Vincent, St. Mary's high school, but, yeah. uh, is it, is it sincere? Is that how we're, is that how it's I think so. Pronounced? Yeah. I think sincere so. Harris. Uh, he's a six, three guard out of St. St. Vincent, St. Mary's high school in Akron, Ohio. Um, he did sign and commits, or at least committed to uh, Illinois this week. So uh, that was a nice get, kind of a nice surprise, I think, uh, to go along with the Kofi news. Uh, There's that another name the that people need to look for, Dawson Garcia. Yep. Uh, transfer from Marquette. He's a big, he's 6'10", but he's a stretch guy. So he could play, I think, probably play the four um, and some five. Um, he has taken an official visit here to Illinois, to North Carolina, and I believe to Arizona, I think that's his final three. Yeah. Um, I mean, if, if Kofi doesn't come back, that is a more than worthy alternative. I, I really like the possibility of adding Garcia. Garcia and Kofi would make Illinois a top 10, top five team because Garcia was a top 30 prospect coming yeah. out of college. Um, yeah. This last year was his freshman year. So he's he's still young. He w- He's one of those guys that also went through the whole NBA process and put his name in the portal. And I think he has said he's coming back to college. I think he is fully withdrawn from the NBA and is yeah. transferring. So Dawson Garcia is a name and a guy that maybe by the time this is released, he has made his decision. I doubt it, but that's the, that's the risk you run when you talk about someone 24 hours or 12 hours before you release a release yeah. an episode, but Dawson Garcia, keep the name in your head for the next day, weeks, um, ahead because uh he could be a potential guy for illinois yeah uh just a couple other things college basketball related uh both big 10 i saw that ej liddell uh said he's not yep. he's gonna stay at ohio state so uh he's obviously one of the best players in the conference and there was some smoke around. at one point about him coming to champagne oh i know there was a lot of smoke <laughs> there oh man i know we never touched on it on the show but uh yeah there was there was some stuff there for sure is uh can he play the five or does he make them worse when he's the five? Cause they don't I have don't, any I, other options. I though. don't know that it helps to have him at the five, but I mean, what else can you do? Right. Like, they don't have like a big, if it's, so. if it's going to be uh if that's the situation it is, then I mean, whatever. And then uh, the other thing I was going to mention is that Marcus Carr 
um, mm -hmm. does have his uh, list down to his final three um, or four schools, four, I guess, yeah, Kentucky, four. Texas, Kansas, and Louisville. So um, he'll be transferring to one of those. Also, I don't know if you, I just saw this, that uh, Georgie is getting a workout with the Lakers. Did you see this? Oh, I did not see that. Yeah. I just saw this come across the like, world. Like web. just now? A uh, little bit before we started recording, I was, I was sitting down to eat uh, before we started this right when I got home. According, it's from Lakers Nation on Twitter. Uh, Lakers will reportedly be working out Illinois big man Georgie Bassanis Dilly. So, don't know the validity of that, but uh, <laughs> what would LeBron James's reaction be to Georgie in that locker room? I, I have no oh idea. Oh my gosh! I have no idea. Again, don't know the true validity of this, but uh, it was it was also tweeted out by somebody else. Is where they got it. So, I don't know. We'll see what happens there. But uh, that's enough Illinois stuff. Um, moving on to your sons, man, Craig. You just Your threw sons. me for a loop. Hold on a second. Oh, you need to pause? You I need, take a minute? I need to. Georgie Bashanis Philly is getting a look from the Lakers. Wow. I mean, he's not going to get drafted by the Lakers, but I mean, you know, whatever. I mean, I think Georgie could have a decent pro career, honestly. I know he really floundered, fluttered in the last couple of years with Illinois, but yeah. he's he's got it. I mean, he's got the talent. I don't know that he'll be an NBA player, but I really like his game translating professionally i think his career is probably overseas but a good for him to get get an opportunity but okay we can move this on to the, the nba this now. is the tweet from at notorious ohm ohm um the lakers will have illinois georgie bashanis philly in a workout on wednesday according to a league source the six-time power forward has a seven-two wingspan and could play multiple positions they say six five six nine oh, okay six nine so yeah anyway uh, Good for anyway, him. That's uh, for that's him. that news. So, Craig, your sons go to the finals, man. Sons in four. Son, okay. Well, it <laughs> took them six to get by the, the Clippers. Yeah, yeah. Don't know if it's going to take only four to get past the Bucks. Um, but congratulations. Not, thank you. Thank you. And we're You're picking like a great I'm... year to be a bandwagon fan. <laughs> I was going to say we're talking like I've been a lifelong fan here. Uh -huh. Um. Yeah, I was um, I was never really worried during um, the uh, game six. It was um, yeah, it was fun. It was uh, this team. The Suns are are really fun to watch. Chris Paul, man, I know we've said it the last like two episodes, but holy cow! What what do you go off for? Did he have forty one? I think he had forty one so. in game yeah. six. The dude just. I was never a big Chris Paul fan. Um, and I don't, I think it's probably because he was in the same draft as Darren. Yeah. It was had always a better Chris career. Paul versus Darren yeah. Williams. So Darren Williams had a couple years in there where I think he was better than Chris Paul, at least on a, you know, small level when comparing them one, one V one, but uh, yeah, Chris Paul is far away, far and away been the more superior one to come out of that draft class. But yes, I'm with you. I'm with you. I was always team Darren as well. Right. But you have to respect what he's doing. I mean, yeah, he's had a, he's had a great career. One of those players I just didn't think was ever going to get to this point. Yeah. Um, just his, he was on good teams, but they were just never good enough. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the fact that that Clippers team that he was on never got that far is kind of a shame. I mean, it's one of those, you know, they were never the best team in the league, but they were just a, they were a talented, fun team to watch. And the fact that they never got there, um and if you if you remember he was also uh almost a laker at one yeah. point and was going to potentially play with with kobe and maybe even pal gasol what, i think would he was, on that team i think Powell was, was in the that? trade i think okay. Powell was in the trade that could have been right whatever it was he was close to becoming a laker and that got that got axed um from higher powers um so he's just I, he's yeah. just always had this career that i just thought he was just going to be another one of those you know charles barkley type players that you know Another son's greatest, great. <laughs> another son's great. One of the greatest of all time. They just didn't get a ring. So yeah. he's going to have a shot at it and they're playing really well. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we'll have to see if the Bucks if the Bucks are healthy, they're going to be a challenge. Um, so, but everybody gets saying healthy has been the biggest issue of the entire NBA playoffs. So if the Clippers not, would have been healthy, would the Suns be there? I don't know. <laughs> I, I I don't know. I mean, the fact that they still got, you know, it only took, I guess it, I said it only took six games, but 
I don't know. It's hard to say the yeah. way this, the way this playoff has gone. Yeah. Um, it's everybody's been injured. Every team has had to go through. I mean, I get that's the case every year that injuries mm-hmm. happen, but mm-hmm. I think this season with the shortened season, with the shortened off season, like the way the last year and a half has just rolled out in the world. Yeah. Um, it's not really doing anybody any favors, but the NBA is definitely taking a, a, a bunt or a, the brunt of that. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, it's been plenty of injuries, but I mean, if they, if they stay healthy here, who knows? So let me ask you this. I saw yes. a tweet earlier last week. It might've been like the day after the sun's clinched that um, because of all of the injuries, like every, every team in the playoffs has had some sort of injury to their star, like Giannis, Chris Paul missed multiple games. Kawhi Leonard right. missed the whole um, conference finals. Trey young was hurt for a little, like everyone star has been out. The writer or whoever said that this finals or whoever wins the finals should have an asterisk next to it because they didn't go up against no. the best teams. That's dumb. Same people that said there should have been an asterisk after last season. That's why I, I said if, that, if any, not... if any champ no. needs an asterisk, it's last year's champ. Listen, I, I understand the sentiments because as I said, the last year and a half has been, has been a challenge on a lot of different fronts. Yeah. Um, but you know what the NBA went through with the bubble and then having, you know, for some teams, a very, very short postseason or off season. Yeah. And then starting up again, you know, Christmas time or whatever it was. Um, and then now you're seeing, you're seeing it here. Um, no, I do not believe there should be an asterisk. Um, if, the, as you said, if there was going to be any asterisk, it should have been last year, but I don't believe that was the case either. Yeah. Um, I, I don't think that's, that's just, this just is how it is. This is where we're at now. What I wish, and this is totally off subject. I wish they would just get on a schedule where they just start at Christmas because I think, especially now you would give them plenty of time to rest. Um, but here we are again, if they start on time, it's going to be this, you know, for these two teams, if this goes seven games, it's going to be mid July and they will have gone how, I mean, just when you, when you add it up, I mean, add it up from when the bubble started up to this point, you know, the amount of downtime some of these yeah. teams is going to have is going to be very, very minimal. Yeah. So, plus no, some I, of I them would not we, give an asterisk. We talked about it last week. Some of the guys in the finals are going to play in the Olympics. Yep. So yeah. they're not going to have any time off. Nope. Um, I think can't, I think NBA camp start in like October, early yeah. October, mid October. I think opening weekends normally around Halloween. Yeah. So, so yeah, I've, I was just talking to someone not too long ago. I'm like, it's July. It's like the MLB all-star break. The MLB is yeah. halfway through their season and we're still playing yeah. NBA basketball. It's just, it's just a too combination long. of a lot of things. It is too long. No, I agree with that. It is too long. Um, I mean, this NBA season always does go into the summer. Uh, not usually this late. I don't believe. Um, is best of seven necessary? Should they go to best of five for playoffs? Best of three? No, best of five, I, probably. I mean, they've always done seven. I don't know that I see that changing, um, you know, in the finals at least. Um, should they I do know. away with I think, I That's think the they other should talk. Do, they obviously do need to make some changes, I think. My biggest thing, as I would say, you start at Christmas because I think the season could, be, could stand to be a little shorter. For sure. Um, find a way to add, maybe add more teams to your playoffs, kind of similar to what they did this year. If they like that model – you know, roll with that. Um, maybe not on Christmas, but, you know, closer to Christmas as opposed to Halloween. I mean, I think that you're competing with the NFL at that point. I was, like, I was just say, start it after Thanksgiving because Thanksgiving am, is like the I NFL know plenty day. of people that actually care about the NBA that honestly don't watch it before Christmas. Yeah. Like even for me, like I keep, I follow it enough, but usually it's like, okay, Christmas day's here. What's going on in the NBA? Yeah. Like, and there's, that's their marquee matchup. So start the season yeah. with a big, big slate. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. So I don't know. Either who, way. Who um, you got? It depends on Giannis, right? It obviously depends, it has on, to Giannis. depend on Giannis. Um, I don't want to pick against the Suns just because I think that's one heck of a story. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know they've played really well. Uh, 
they were, you know, the fact that the Suns went undefeated in the bubble last yeah. year and still didn't make the playoffs. And then yeah. the season they've had this year and this run, I don't want to pick against them, uh, but because I know you're going to pick them. And <laughs> if Giannis stays healthy or if Giannis is healthy, I'll take the Bucks. Yeah. Um, I don't know. That's where my, where my heart is. Yeah. Uh, obviously if Giannis doesn't contribute much, if he's going to be out for however many games, like that's, that's, yeah. I think it's, that doesn't matter, but I think the, the bucks go as their, I don't want to call them role players because I mean, Drew yeah. holiday and Chris Middleton are very, very good, but they go, the bucks go as those two go. Yeah. If Chris Middleton's playing well, I think the bucks have a, have a really, really, really good team. Yeah. Um, but once you get past Middleton, like, I think a bunch of their guys are kind of blah, like, Brooke Lopez yeah. is okay. Pat Connaughton, I think, gets a lot of minutes. Like they're they're okay. I think the Suns are very deep. These are, and we mentioned this, I think, last week. These are a couple of good teams, but this is not a sexy matchup no. for the NBA. No. I mean, yes, you have Giannis. You do have a an elite superstar. Um, you have good play. I mean, Devin Booker, Chris Paul. I mean, those yeah. are you know those are those are superstars. But Chris Paul is at the end of his career. And Devin Booker is not quite at elite level yet. Yeah, so, he's going to be there soon. Next, uh, he like, will be there like soon. two or three years. I, oh, for sure. He's going to be he's, like a face. He's not one of the league's marquee names right now. Yeah. And I could see, um, I could see Phoenix like, yeah, you said it's not sexy right now, but in like two or three years, if it's Phoenix versus Boston, yeah, I think that's a sex. I think Phoenix is like turning into a sexy franchise. Uh, James Jones see- and Monty Williams do a really good job. Did you see the random guy that tweeted out a few years ago? Yeah. That uh, this the 2021 NBA Finals would be. I think he's a. I think he's a Bucks fan, but I think he tweeted Bucks Suns. Was it a few years ago? I thought it was in 2020. I thought it was just like in the. I year thought he it was. It. No, I thought it was before that. Oh. I don't remember what it but was. Yeah, so I saw ESPN it. Yeah. had picked it up or whatever. Yeah. But anyway, um, so yeah, that's where we're at with the NBA Finals. Um, let's see. Game one is tonight. June 6th, or one, July 6th. July 6th, as yes, the, the night this show comes out, um, that will be the beginning of the final. So I'm assuming you're taking your sons. Sons yeah. in four? Sons no. In four? No, oh, no, not in four. Not um, that cocky? I'm going to say six just because I don't want it to go seven. I'll, I'll just go bucks and seven just for the heck of it. Um. So good luck to your sons. Thank you. I cannot wait for them to win and for you to have, be able to fly another banner behind you <laughs> on your set. Uh, I don't know you need if to add your Chelsea for, banner, uh, yeah. Chelsea banner, and your sons banner, and your Illini most wins in the Big Ten banner, and yeah. you just need to. That needs to be your your thing. You just need to have a bunch of you know banners behind you of all these bandwagon teams you fall under. So my two Cardinals World Series and one Blues Stanley Cup isn't enough. How many cups no. do you have? Banner? I don't have any banners. Oh. I mean, I have other stuff. But <laughs> that's not my thing. Your thing clearly is banners. So I just want you to like fill your wall with with banners. That's just what I want you to do. And I have know. like, I have cub stuff and like other things in here. This is the room of like a 14 year old, probably even like a 10 year old. Are you ready? Do, do you office. have your aloe vera ready? You're going to burn me? I don't have... Oh. Go enough ahead. Room for my eleven Cardinals World Series banners. Oh wow. Hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. You're right. Because how many of those have been in your lifetime? Two. Oh, that's great. Congratulations. Two. Just one more. One more than me. <laughs> Kudos to you, my friend. Kudos. Same yeah. Way. You take. Into you baseball. take your eleven banners. That, whatever. I don't need you. Baseball. Yes, we're going to segue into uh, Major League Baseball. We're not going to talk about our teams um, right now. Ugh. I've kind of swore off the Cubs. Did you hear the toilet um, flushing behind me? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have plenty of things I could say, but quite honestly, I haven't watched Cubs baseball in a week, so I'm not even going to bother to to worry about it. They did sign Robinson Chirinos today, so at least they have a backup catcher that was worth something five years ago more than what they had yesterday. Um, but MLB All-Star um, coming up, the starters were announced and the reserves were announced this week. Um, we made our picks slash predictions sort of last week. Um, so I thought this would be a good opportunity to kind of go back and see what we did, how we did. Um, I think we both did fairly well. Um, I think total in terms of how many we did, I think I 
was one better than you, um, but it was close either way. I think you missed two in the National League and three in the American League. You missed two in the American League and two in the National League. And I missed one in the National League and three in the American League. So oh, we tied. We, exactly. Okay, we tied. Um, I had the names written down. I had the wrong number written down. And I clearly just messed that up. So, um, yes, we both just missed four of the, what would that be? Nine plus eight, 17 picks um, of the starters. So um, we'll just real quick, real quickly run through the starters um, and talk about who we got right, who we got wrong. Uh, on the American side, um, Salvador Perez uh, from Kansas City, we both got right. Um, Vlad Guerrero we both, at first base, we both got right. Uh, the AL second baseman is Marcus Simeon of the Blue Jays. I got that one correct. Uh, Craig did not. He took Jose Altuve of the Astros. Um, Rafael Devers, we got, both got correct. Um, the shortstop is Xander Bogarts, who I believe I missed. I think I put, took Bo Bichette, yep. um, but Craig got that one correct. The outfielders for the American League are Mike Trout, who is hurt and will not play, Aaron Judge, and Teoscar Hernandez. Um, I, we both had – Craig got two of those right. Craig got Trout and Judge correct, and I missed uh, Judge and Hernandez. So I picked Trout – uh Adolis Garcia and Cedric Mullins and you had Trout Judge and Mullins um yep. so we did all right there and then we both had Shohei Otani uh as the obvious choice for the DH um on the National League side um we both picked the catcher right despite both of our teams having a catcher in the mix um first base I got correct choosing Freddie Freeman um Craig had Max Muncie Second base, I picked correctly Adam Frazier, and Craig missed that one as well with Jose or Ozzy Albies. Um, third base, Craig got his boy Nolan Arenado. Uh, I missed that one. I took my boy, my boy. That's weird to say. Uh, Chris Bryant, who did make the team surprisingly, despite having a terrible month of June. Uh, shortstop, we both got right Fernando Tatis Jr., and then we both got the outfield right Acuna, Castellanos, and Jesse Winker. Any thoughts, Craig, on the starters before we did dive into the reserves a little bit? Any Toronto shocks? fans show up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they do. Uh, they have the whole they have the whole country of Canada. Holy cow! What else are they going to root for up there? Um, they don't have know, the Expos anymore. So yeah. if they like baseball at all, they're voting for the Raptors Blue Jays. Suck. Yeah. Um, I know you picked Simeon. I didn't think he would be the pick. Um, at second base for the AL. There wasn't a great choice. There wasn't there. a great choice. I think Altuve's numbers are good, but like I said last week, he's kind of a villain. No one likes him. So right. they're not going to, fans aren't going to vote him in. He made it um, that far, though. He was true. top three at least. Um, Teoscar Hernandez is not a yeah, guy that I would have thought would be a starter. Yeah. Um, that one was, that should have been Cedric Mullins. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he wasn't going to get yeah. the votes because nobody knows who he is. He plays on a terrible team, but he is having one heck of a season. Yeah, I traded and him. Like, that should have been him. Early May, probably. Early May, I probably traded him like as a throw-in piece in fantasy baseball to get Aaron Judge. I was like, all right, this guy's not going to keep it up. No one knows who he is, and now yeah. he's an all-star. But mm -hmm. what can you do? Um, nothing in the AL really surprised me, I don't think. I don't have it. I know you just other than off, Hernandez but, or NL. I meant, I meant NL. Oh. Sorry. Um, yeah. There wasn't so, much shocking about the NL. I guess my question for the AL is, I mean, Trout hasn't played for eight weeks. He's still Mike Trout. He's right. getting it, the votes. Do you think he deserved to be on the ballot? If he only played like the, like the top 60 three games ballot. Yeah. Like he's hurt. He's not going to play in the game. Like he's already been ruled out. So should he be eligible I'd, for the game? <laughs> I have this question in my head every year and I've never had somewhere to like talk it out or I've never talked it out. Like if you're on the IL and you're going to be on the IL through the all-star break, well, should you be here, valid or should you be the, able to be voted on? Here's the thing. And this goes back to what our, we talked about last week. And you said that you weren't a huge fan of the fan voting, yeah. which I can understand that. Um, I really, I really do get where you're coming from on that. Um, but I think this debate is similar to that discussion. Yeah. Um, Mike Trout is the best player in baseball. 
He is yeah. the most famous player in baseball. He's likely always going to be voted in as a as an all-star starter. It, yeah. That's just that's just where we're at. If the way baseball does it, the fact that every team gets gets a candidate at every position to start, and then they do the fan voting, that's just how it's going to be. Um, I think. Do I think that they should change that? Probably yes, but I don't think that's fair totally because it's about the fan voting. And just because a player is not going to play, he can still go. He can still be mentioned as an all-star. Um, he's still recognized by the fans to be an all-star starter. I think that is that is a feat. Um, whether or not they truly deserve it in a particular season is up for debate. Um, but I don't know. I think there's a lot of factors that go into it. I think that, you know, an example that comes to my mind, and this is not totally the same type of thing, but um, 20... 15, Jake Arrieta had just kind of a subpar first half of the season, was nowhere near our all-star consideration. Second half of the season, absolutely tore it up. And then had a, had a good enough start to 2016. So, you know, he, he got voted in for that too. Um, I, I think the way that it all shakes out from season to season can kind of vary depending on who the player is. Um, do I think they should probably change it? Yes. If you're going to change how it's done, you have to start at the very beginning with the way the fans vote. Um, if you're going to change that, then yeah, you change everything else, but the way it's set up now, I guess I don't mind it. That's my long answer to your question. Um, but anyway, those are the starters. Uh, that's how we did. As I said, we both missed four, I think in total. Yeah. Um, Real quickly, we'll kind of go over some of the reserves. Um, not we won't need we don't need to talk about everybody, but um, on the AL side, uh, Mike Zanino was the catcher that was chosen to back up Salvador Perez. There really wasn't a great other option in the, in the American League um, other than Perez, so uh, good for Zanino. I believe this is probably his first selection. Yeah. Um, we've you know, already mentioned. You know what you're going to get with him. You're you're going to get like a sub 200 average, but 30 yeah. home runs. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. All of his hits are home runs. Exactly. Um, we both mentioned Jose Altuve and, and Bo Bichette um, as players that we we had selected. They both made the cut in the American League. Um, Jose Ramirez is having a good season. Jared Walsh is having a good season. Um, first baseman and outfielder for the Angels. Uh, he made the cut for them. Uh, Adolis Garcia, who I mentioned, who I did pick, and then Cedric Mullins, who, as we both talked about, we both picked probably should have been a starter um, and might still get the start because – um, you know, or er, er Mike Trout's not going to play. So uh, there will be a, a substitution there, um, which could very well go to um, Cedric Mullins. We'll just have to see. That'll be up to the manager um, when that comes down to it. So uh, J.D. Martinez and Nelson Cruz also both made that list as well. Um, pitchers. Well, this is where the interesting thing comes in. Shohei Otani. Yeah. Um, see, here's, here's the thing. This is, really, this is really cool. Like, I'm not trying to downplay this at all. But he was selected as a pitcher. He's having a good season as a pitcher, but he was already on the team. Like he got voted in as the DH. So, like, are they just calling him the pitcher? Like, was he actually like physically selected to be he's one of the best pitchers in, in the American League? Or he's already on the team. So we're obviously gonna find a way to get him into the game to pitch too. So you're, like, you're is it like, one of those situations? Did he take some other pitcher's spot by naming yes. him as a pitcher? Yes. Oh, I hadn't even thought of that. That's my thing. Like, don't get me wrong. He's having a good season on the mound, but like the feat for Otani is that he's having a great season at the plate and that he's also pitching. Yeah. Like, I think that's how this is shaking out. I don't know. That's just the way I kind of interpreted it. Like, yeah, he's on the team. So obviously they're, you know, going to call him a pitcher too, but like, did he take the spot of somebody else? I don't know. Um, But yeah, Shohei Otani um, did make the cut as well. Um, And then some pitchers, uh, Garrett Cole, Shane Bieber, who I believe is hurt. Mm-hmm. Um, your, your boy, Lance Lynn, uh, former <sighs> Cardinal. Great. The, the White Lynn. Sox had three players, all pitchers, um, uh, make yeah, the that cut. Makes, that makes sense. Um, they've had some decent seasons. I think Yon Mankata is probably the biggest nub from the bats from the White mm. Sox. I don't think he's having a great year. I have, he's, having a, he's having a good enough year. He's hitting about 300. I mean, I don't think he's having a terrible year, but I mean, he's been hurt too. They've had some, they had some other injury issues. So mm-hmm. either way, the White Sox did get three guys into the game. Uh, all three of them pitchers, Carlos Rodon, Lance Lynn, 
and Liam Hendricks. Uh, National League, we talked about the starters. Um, neither of our catchers um, got yeah, got in the, the game. Heck? What the heck? Um, JT Realmuto uh, is the. I think he's the better choice, probably. I mean, I don't know that. I don't know. Whatever. Uh, I'm not too upset about Wilson Contreras not playing because, to be quite honest with you, Wilson Contreras needs to rest <laughs> because Wilson Contreras has caught every single game probably since the season started. So um, if he can have a few days off, I'm fine with that. Um, I protest that. Not that. I protest the real Muto pick. Okay, whatever. Um, <laughs> Yachty could probably use a rest too if they have any shot at doing anything in the second half. Uh, Ozzy uh, Albies, who Craig picked, uh, is the second baseman. Chris Bryant did make the cut, as I said, despite having a terrible month of June. Uh, so the Cubs do get two picks. Uh, Brandon Crawford, who's having an excellent season for the Giants. Uh, he made the team... Uh, Max Muncy, who Craig mentioned, Trey Turner, uh, Mookie Betts, Brian Reynolds was having a good season. Kyle Schwarber, who took off in the month of June and then got hurt. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah did did make the team as as an outfielder. Is that his first? The, yes. Uh, yeah, he was he hit home run derby a couple of seasons ago, but he's not been in an all-star He never game. made an all-star game with the Cubs. No. He was always like their sixth best player. That's true. That's true. I mean, no. Uh, he Yeah, he did have that home run derby. Uh, the year in DC with uh, Harper. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, so Schwarber made the team, although he just got hurt. So he's not, he's not going to play. Uh, and I mentioned it, Chris Taylor made the cut, which I think is really cool. Cause call. he's not, he's not a guy that really stands out, but he's an important player on that team who can play any position and he's having a good season. And when they've had Bellinger who's missed a lot of time and Seager who's missed a lot of time and Betts is only having just an okay season, like he has really carried a lot of that load for that offense. So uh, good for Chris Taylor to make the cut. Um, the Brewers, uh, their big three offense or the big three starting pitchers all made the cut or two of them, I guess, made the cut. Uh, Corbin Burns and Brandon Woodruff. Also Josh Hader made the cut for the Brewers. Um, Jacob, De- Jacob DeGrom, former Cub, U Darvish. Uh, that one stings a little bit. Um, Kevin Galsman, who's having a good season as well. Um, Zach Wheeler, who's having a great season for the Phillies. He made it. Yeah. Um, and then uh, it's a pretty it's a pretty strong uh, list of closers there for the for the National League with Hader, Kimbrell, Melanson, and Alex Reyes. So, uh, what did both of our teams get? Two, two. Is that correct? Yeah. Uh, a pitcher and a third baseman. Uh, actually, a closer and a third baseman for both yep. for both the Cardinals and the Cubs. So three three White Sox made the cut, uh, and two Cardinals and two Cubs made the cut. So All Star game coming up here uh, is that next week. I don't even know what date it is. Um, I think the 13th, the 13th is the all-star game. So yeah, um, obviously some injuries will happen. So some other replacements will come, but uh, either way, I think we did pretty well in our predictions. Yeah. Any, any snubs, anybody you was that you were upset to not see on the list. Come on. Other than Yachty Molina. (laughs) Um, No, honestly. Catcher of his era. Did you see my, did you see my subtweet today? No, I didn't see it. Yes, I did. (laughs) You and Lewis Bolt. Um, I honestly hadn't really dissected it through the weekend. I should have for the show. But, I hadn't either. Um, I hadn't either. There, none there really wasn't a lot. Of. There wasn't yeah. a lot. Um, there, yeah, yeah. I'm happy with it. As you said, there are going to be um, like the pitchers that throw on Sunday for their team. They always pull yeah. off the team and they name replacements. So these rosters of 50 all-stars turn into 75 all-stars by the time the game actually happens. So, so yeah, um, I'm, I'm pleased with it. I don't have any early gripes other than okay. Yachty, but I think you, he might you really, get in. you really think Yachty is he's like... got the same numbers as real Muto. Okay. All right. That's fair. That's fair. No, I'm just asking. Um, I'm I, just I mean, asking. I, I don't disagree with the real Muto pick. I just think Yachty deserves it as well. I mean, to be doing this at 39 years old, I think those three, if you go by the numbers, uh, Posey, Rumuto, and Yachty are the three best in the NL. It, catcher position is is kind of non-existent anymore, don't you think? There's like four good ones. Yeah. So. Yeah. No, that's fair. That's fair. Especially in the American League. There wasn't much to look at yeah, at all. Exactly. So after, after Salvador Perez, there was not much. Right. And the NL is loaded. I mean, two of the, the two best catchers in the National League are both old. I mean, both Yachty and Buster Posey are, you know, they're at the back yeah. end of their career. This year. Yeah. Um, 
but they're both having good seasons, Posey especially. So, um, yeah, All Star Game next week. Um, real quick, we talked about doing some uh, some mid season awards. Yeah. Uh, for baseball, did you I have think, a, a short list of things names you wanted to give out trophies to? Or I think they're pretty obvious, so I think we're probably going to agree on all of them, so we don't have to spend yeah, much I, time. I didn't think we would probably be disagreeing here. So, yeah, go on. Um, we'll start in the AL. The MVP. I mean, it's, it's Shohei Otani. Shohei Otani. Yeah. I mean, if, if something happens, I mean, yeah, or um, Vlad Jr. is right on his tail. He's right there. Yeah. Um. So if Shohei starts to stumble at all but i mean for what he's doing um, with the bat in his hands and still being able to be a you know middle of the rotation starter like yeah like that's just phenomenal like we've finally seen this in action so i'm just i'm just glad we've had it for at least half a season yeah we'll just see if if that holds up but yeah he is he's definitely the american league pick but uh i just hate that he he stutters at all it's vlad jr i hate that he plays for the angels because no one outside of california ever gets to see him other than his highlights. Um, I wanted to go Vlad so bad. So I went to the standings and I was like, maybe the blue Jays are like five, seven games hit ahead of the angels, but they have like the exact same record. So yeah, it's, it's Shohei. It'll likely be one or the other. Shohei is the, yeah. the leader right now, but we'll see what happens. So uh, national league MVP, who do you got? Tatis. Yeah. It's either him or Acuna. And I think Tatis gets the nod because yeah. the Padres are, Braves aren't playing very well. No. And Padres are. So yeah, I agree. I agree. I would uh I would love as a even as a red or a Cubs fan, I would love to see one of those outfielders get it because they are just tearing the, the tar off the baseball, Castellanos and Winker. Yeah. Okay. Um, that was that's what but, I was gonna say. But um, I mean, if they're not gonna be in a shot to win the, the win a division and Tatis yeah. is having the season he's having, I mean it's that's gonna be him. So yeah, yep. Um American League Cy Young. This was here? the this was the one that here. yeah I think it's a toss up. Um, Carlos Rodon has been really good. Lance Lynn has a two point oh two ERA. I know he only he's only thrown like eighty four innings, so he's not going deep into games. He pulled after five or six, but and only like eighty strikeouts, so he's been okay. Garrett Cole was on fire, um, but his last three starts have been very very bad. There's I have him on a fantasy team and people are talking about, you know, no more sticky stuff. So his, he's losing a lot of his, his numbers. Um, I'll, I'm going to go Rodon just because the Yankees suck and the White Sox are, it's their, it's their pitching staff that's leading them to the division lead. So I'm going to go Rodon for AL Cy Young. That's the only one that I had any kind of second guessing with. That's fair. I, uh, I don't have a great, front runner here um the guys that i think are having having really good seasons have both had some injury issues um so i can't really confidently say either of them i mean kyle gibson is the american league leader yeah. in war uh, yeah from p- pitcher standpoint but he's he's missed part of the season he's he's six and oh with an era under two um but you know i don't think we can confidently give it to him um i mean garrett cole's up there too he's having you know a good enough season I, I love John Means, but he's been out the last month. Out, yeah. Um, prior yeah. to that, he was having a great season too. So, I mean, I think Rodone makes sense. Um, I, I don't know. I'm probably not going to have any argument with you there um, just because I don't think there's a great um, second option. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, we'll just go with that. Um, National League, is there an obvious choice here? Uh, DeGrom. <laughs> yeah, I think so too. Is his ERA still below one? Uh, let's look. Where is he at? Yeah, seven and two with a point nine five ERA. <laughs> that, that's like the best. That's the best. One hundred and thirty six. One hundred and thirty six strikeouts. The best stat line I've ever seen. Yeah, from a pitcher. Um, you know, I thought it, I should have looked this up. Um, because I I know ESPN does a Cy Young predictor, and I forgot oh, to look yeah. at this. I want to see what they have. Right now they have um, relievers for the American League. <laughs> oh, that top. makes sense. Yeah, uh, it's Matt Barnes, Liam Hendricks, uh, Lance Lynn is their top starting pitcher on this. I don't know. Again, this is just beginning of July. I'm not sure that I trust this totally, but I was just curious. But they would have they have Kevin Gausman at the top of the National League uh, with oh. Hater, Hater, and then Degrom third. Degrom third. Yeah, yeah, that doesn't make any sense. Um, I'm trying to see. 
DeGrom's pitched three less games than Gausman has and about 20 or so less innings, um, mm-hmm. but does have more strikeouts, has far less runs given up. Uh, record is pretty close to even and lower ERA. So whatever. I think it's where Zach Wheeler? Zach Wheeler's, Zach Wheeler's having a season two. Great year. Yeah. He's uh he's the top. I was looking at the war list. That's where that first thing came from. He's not on this particular list. I'm looking at right now on this whole Cyan predictor, but he's having a really good season two. So he's got your cubbies um, in a couple days. We, I know I don't want to talk about them. Um, we are running out of time. Um, we usually like to give ourselves about an hour or so, but real quick, real quick. Oh, we're, we're at an hour. <laughs> we are out. I know I'm timing it too. Um, big brother, big brother here. starts this week. It's here. Um, it's, it's, we can't, I don't, I'm not going to go into much detail on like, you know, who these cast members are because you don't, obviously nobody knows who these people are. We just see their pictures and their names and their, you know, a few bio things about them. But the interesting thing um, already, um, all the season, the season hasn't even started yet. I don't even think they've entered the house. They, I know they haven't entered the house yet. Um, they've already had one cast member um, had to drop out because of COVID. Yeah. Um, she was, she was vaccinated and she tested positive um she's had no symptoms i believe from what i've read um yeah she sent out a video that said she had no symptoms yeah so her name um was christy right yes christy um was the was on the original list of um house house guests that were going to enter into the big brother house uh, when that show starts uh, this coming week And uh, she's already had to drop and she's already been replaced. So um, again, I'm not going to go into much detail on that just because we don't really know a ton. Uh, Her her replacement is uh, somebody by the name of Claire. Not that that's really important right now, but um, yeah, that's just interesting just because we haven't even started the season and COVID's still um, running through things. So yeah. I mean, do they not like put them in a house like sequester no, them I, for like three they, yes, weeks they, they do i don't know i don't know how this stuff happens um that's the thing, thing with covid tests is sometimes this stuff happens so um i don't know how it all shakes out but uh yes that's uh that's the thing that just came out with today also one other big brother thing did you see have you seen the pictures or anything from the house i just briefly saw them before we started they have put a door and to a door to go to the bathroom so you know how the house has always been where they have the circular circle staircase and then right at the bottom of that is the yeah. kitchen and then there's just that hallway yeah. that goes to the bathroom yeah. and last season there was the big fight that happened where somebody was yelling in the bathroom and the people could hear it and go back and forth now there's a door there so it used oh. to just be open like you could see into like the, the couch area yeah. in the bathroom a little more privacy but- yeah, so now there's more, a, more now there's a door there. So Who was the I fight between? How, I don't remember. That. I don't. I don't remember. It might. It might have been two seasons ago. I don't remember. I just remember that happening. Um, but anyway, uh, hmm. we're not going to talk hmm. about too much Big Brother yet because the season starts this week. Yeah, and so we'll have plenty to talk about. I'm sure as we get a little further. So, um, Craig, I, I just watched uh, quickly. Oh I, no, I mean this is Big Brother related. Oh, it's not okay. a movie. Don't get too oh. excited. I haven't watched. Do you watch? Week, so. Do you watch Peridium stuff on YouTube? Yes. Yeah. Peridium did like a, 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 a review of the fourteen people, and I haven't um, watched that. Okay. Six, yeah. Sixteen people. Uh, Derek F. Is yep, there's two Derek's. Derek F. Is Joe Frazier's son, the boxer. Really? Yeah. That's fun, <laughs> right? I didn't know that. That's yeah. good to know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, I do. That's watch about all stuff, I, but I haven't. I haven't seen that video yet. I haven't. Do you watched watch? It much this weekend, do you so. watch Outer Banks on Netflix? No, I don't. Well, one of the guys, Travis, on Big Brother, looks like John B. from Outer oh. Banks, like exactly okay. like him. So those are the two yeah. things that I noticed. And there's a that's, lot of diversity. Yes, a lot that's of diversity. What, that was one Which of the things they stressed that they were going to try to do this season was a lot yeah. more diversity, but it's still a pretty young cast. That's been one of the things I have seen is the average age is still like 26. The first thing so. I wrote down when I, I figured that you would ask me like, what do you think of the cast? And I wrote down a bunch of 20 somethings living off of social media. <laughs> pretty much <laughs> a bunch pretty of much. young 20 somethings. Yeah. yeah. I, uh, I, I usually don't get too much into the cast before the season starts just because like, I don't know who any of these people are. So, right. 
Um, so but yeah, anyway, big Sunday, brother, Wednesday, that's, Thursday, right? Sunday, Wednesday, Thursday. I believe that's, that's what their schedule usually is. So okay. I'm assuming it's not changing for this year. So we will have plenty to talk about with that, uh, yeah. on a weekly basis. Um, for any of you listeners out there that actually watch big brother, you should, that'll you be something we're going to talk about. I enjoy it. I've been watching now for the last almost 10 years, probably. So do you watch anything else like game any, shows like that? Um, like I, I watch survivor. So I watched her. I mean, when I was living at home, um, you know, various times in my life, I watched more because my mom watches a lot of them. Um, but any more, no, I watched a little bit of the circle, the first season of the circle on Netflix. Sure. Um, I didn't see the whole season though. Uh, no, this is really bad. It big brother is like my only real, like trash TV and you know, everybody has their like guilty pleasure, trash TV shows that yeah. they watch. This is really like the only one that I have. So yeah, I have enough issues with keeping up with other tv shows as it is so anyway uh i didn't really get to any movies this week um there was a couple that i'm really excited to see but uh, traveling war? for the weekend tomorrow war is one of them uh yeah. there's another one that came out on hbo max that i'm pretty excited about mm-hmm. um no sudden moves this is a steven soderbergh movie so i might get to that this week uh, might have a little bit to talk about next week with those but with the holiday weekend and traveling and going to visit out in the middle of nowhere where they have no internet you know i just don't really get to my many streaming movies over the weekend. So anyway, we're going to shut it down um, for the week. Craig, you have any last, last thoughts, final thoughts, final comments before we dismiss for the night? No, nothing, nothing, nothing. nothing. Go sons. Not yet. No, nope, not, I mean, not I mean, yet. I mean, go sons, but I think they'll still be oh. playing by the time, like by we, when we uh, record next. So. So it, you're not it, saying you're not predicting that by the time we record again, the series will be over. No, I don't think it can because yeah, I don't think like it can either. Three, three games, but yeah, but yeah. Okay. Go Suns, but we, we've still got work to do. Still got work to do. <laughs> well, maybe by uh, next week, we'll know more about the Kofi situation. Um, but I mean, we'll have to know something with the world of college basketball. Um, but yeah, that's been another episode of no one asked us episode 20 is in officially in the books. Congratulations, Craig. We have officially, there you go. That's it. That's it. <laughs> episode 20 of no one asked us. He's been Craig Schott. I'm Logan Lee. Give us a follow at no one asked us pod. He's at Craig W. Schott. I'm at the Logan Lee. You can also send us an email at no one asked us 2021 at gmail.com. Please write to us. Let us know what you think. Let us know if, you, if there's something you want to talk about because clearly Craig and I need to fill time. <laughs> Here we are. If you Still want to be around. on the show. Sure. I've had people that want to be on the show, especially if Kofi goes to Kentucky. I've had a couple of those text Ooh. messages from Kentucky people. That's that when we love. should open the phone line. We've also had several people that want to chime in on the whole uh, Yachty first ballot hall of fame discussion so when that episode that's comes hold. that's on hold. that episode comes it's coming there will, be, uh, there will probably be some guest panelists for that show so anyway give us a like follow rate review all that stuff uh, we'll be back next week sometime probably around the same time but who really knows so this has been episode 20 of no one asked us for craig show i'm logan lee bye